Hello, my name is Melissa Giblin, Director of North Carolina Center for the Book at North Carolina Humanities. The North Carolina Center for the Book is a collection of North Carolina Humanities literature and reading programs. Using a variety of formats and initiatives, North Carolina Center for the Book literary programs celebrate and promote the vital importance of books, reading, libraries, and North Carolina's literary heritage. We are excited to continue our partnership with Eric Jones and the Eric Jones Foundation to encourage reading. During a hashtag Read with Eric event on his Facebook page in August, Eric featured Take Your Pet to School Day by Linda Ashman and illustrated by Suzanne Kaufman. You can learn more about Eric and his foundation by visiting ericjonesracing.com slash foundation. With the eighth book in this series being Take Your Pet to School Day, North Carolina Humanities is excited to have author Linda Ashman with us today for an exclusive interview. Linda Ashman is the author of more than 40 picture books. Her books have been included on the best of the year lists of the New York Times, the New York Public Library, Bank Street College of Education, and the International Reading Association and have been translated into many languages. Linda grew up in New Jersey and has lived and worked in many places across the United States. She now lives in Chapel Hill, North Carolina with her husband, their son, and their two dogs. Linda, thank you for taking the time to be with us today. Thanks so much for having me. We are really excited to get to talk with you, so let's get started. Uh, Linda, would you like to tell us what is your favorite childhood book? Well, of course there were so many, but the one that immediately came to mind was a illustrated poetry collection that I think what stands out most is my mom's animated reading of the book when I was little. Um, so I loved the scary poems about the goblins that get you if you don't watch out, or the silly ones, the goops, they lick their fingers, and the goops, they lick their knives, they spill their broth on the tablecloth, oh, they lead disgusting lives, you know, just those kinds of things that, you know, I, I would recite that to my son and he could probably recite it now at age 24 and I just love the rhythm and the rhyme and the silliness or the scariness or whatever the stories and I guess it's no surprise that I mostly write in rhyme because I just you know I'm drawn to that obviously. Yeah absolutely um, it's a very catchy way for young ears to kind of pick up on um, words that sound the same and uh, get that rhythm and uh, be able to interact and having all the silly voices or scary voices or funny voices and, that just makes it all much better. <laughs> yes. Um, what inspired the idea for your book, Take Your Pet to School Day? Ah, uh, this was a really long journey, this book, because I had the idea so long ago for, um, in the title, Take Your Pet to School, to take your pet to school day. And I could picture these kids and wild animals in total chaos at a school. And I tried to write it, but I just, it didn't get anywhere. So I would put it away in my file drawer and pull it out every year or two or three. And so finally, about five years ago, for whatever reason, it clicked and the book came together really quickly. It has this uh, refrain, um, who said these pets could come to school and a mystery. And somehow, anyway, it, it, it all fell together. So, um, <clears throat> so what I always say to writers is never throw away your drafts, even if you think they're never going to go anywhere. If your bad ideas just hang on to all of them and revisit them periodically because sometimes they really do click and one thing i wanted to mention about this book is suzanne kaufman is a terrific illustrator and, and one thing i love is that before she started the book she asked for a picture of my pets which were um, sammy and stella my two dogs and she included them on the last page down in the corner with the principal, Miss Ellen. And 
I'm just so grateful for that because we lost Sammy last year, the lab mix, and she used to spend every day on this couch in my office and was just such a great companion. So I love that she's sort of immortalized in this book. Yeah, that is so special. And we're so glad that you kept going back and revisiting um, the draft for it because what comes out of it is just this very funny, sweet uh, tale of a bunch of kids. I mean, what what little kid doesn't want to bring their pet to school? And I'm not sure what what pet doesn't want to follow their their child right, exactly. to school. Um, and we we won't reveal the mystery of who. Okay. <laughs> Thank we'll, you. We'll let our readers figure that out. <laughs> if you met uh, the children and the teachers and the pets of Maple View in real life, what would you say to them? Um, yeah, you know, it's funny. It's it, it's meant to be a kind of a silly book, but I've written so many books over the years that have been inspired by animals from the very first one I wrote was called Babies on the Go. It's about how animals carry their babies when they're young. And more recently, I wrote When the Storm Comes about how animals and humans respond when we get these terrible storms or wonderful storms. I mean, it was inspired by living here in North Carolina and living through the July thunderstorms. So anyway, I just... I find animals so fascinating and we share the planet with so many amazing creatures. So I guess I would say to all schools, um, you know, let's celebrate these animals, learn more about them and bring your pets to school, of course. <laughs> Just like at Maple View. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> if you could tell young readers anything, what would you tell them? Well, yeah, I've been thinking about this and um, I think one thing I would say is that if it seems hard at first reading or if it doesn't seem all that fun or interesting, that you that you shouldn't get discouraged. It doesn't mean you're not a good reader uh, because sometimes it can be really hard to find the right kind of books for for each kid and i know as a parent i would spend a lot of time doing research on books i thought my my son would love and not everyone has that kind of time so if you are a kid who's having a hard time finding something interesting you know ask your friends ask your teachers but it, definitely talk to a librarian and tell them the things that fascinate you, whether that's baseball or black widow spiders or sharks or dance or anything, you know, because there's going to be books out there that, um, that are about those things. And whether it's, you know, a, a comic book or a picture book or a um, graphic novel or anything, um, there's a book, there's going to be some books out there for you. And also, I would encourage you and your families to try audiobooks for long car rides, because um, that's a wonderful shared experience that we have enjoyed over the years. Um, so that's my advice. <laughs> well, those are great suggestions about how to find uh, what most interests you and a good segue to our next question. Uh, since you brought up libraries, we love to highlight our libraries across the state. Um, so can you tell us what your favorite library memory is or highlight a public library in your community? Yes, well, I have to go back to when I was four or five and walked into the free uh, Flemington Free Public Library in Flemington, New Jersey with my mom and got my first library card. And I walked into this beautiful old, probably from the 1800s building and into the kids section and just was amazed at, that I could take home any of these books. So I think that's when I first fell in love with libraries. Um, but as for North Carolina libraries, when we were living in Colorado, uh, like 
I don't know, maybe 12 years ago, we were considering moving. And one of the places we were considering was Chapel Hill. And so I, before we came out on a trip here, I emailed Karen Mitchell, the Chapel Hill kids librarian, and asked if we could meet with her on our trip. And of course she said yes. And she was so kind and helped us, you know, I, not just with books, but I figured who better to ask than a librarian about the community, about um, schools and activities for kids and vegetarian restaurants, because she's a vegetarian too. So she was just a great resource and has, has been ever since. I mean, and, and you know, that until the pandemic, I always felt like the Chapel Hill Public Library was my second home. And um, yeah, I just love it. So Fantastic. Well, thanks for sharing those wonderful memories and for highlighting Chapel Hill Public Library. Our libraries really are great resources for um, everything in the community and I'm glad that we were able to uh, highlight Chapel Hill Public Library. Mm -hmm. All right. Are you working on anything at present that you would like to share with your readers? I, uh, yes, I'm always working on new things and I'm at, I just wrapped up a few things. So now I'm at that awkward position, which is my least favorite part where I have to start something new. So I'm going to go back to my file folders and hopefully find something like take your pet to school today, today that I can turn into a manuscript. But also, I'd love to tell you about a book I have coming out in December, December 6. It's called Fire Chief Fran. And it's a day in the life of a small town fire department led by a female fire chief. And it's, I wanted it to be a really fun read aloud. It's written in rhyme and has repetition and a refrain. But I also really wanted to have this female fire chief because only, well, less than 10% of all firefighters are are women and fire chiefs, female fire chiefs are even more rare. So it just, um, I really enjoyed talking to some female fire chiefs and learned so much working on this book. And I hope maybe it will inspire some girls. I hope boys and girls like it. But um, anyway, I hope you'll look for it in December. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. Keep an eye out for Fire Chief Fran. Um, and then where can readers go to learn more about you and your work? Uh, um, my website is probably the best place, and it's just my name, lindaashman.com. And um, yeah, so visit me there for sure. That's fantastic. Well, thank you so much, Linda, for taking the time to talk with us today. If our viewers would like to learn more about the work that North Carolina Humanities does, you can check us out at our website at www.nchumanities.org or on social media at NC Humanities on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. And again, we're really excited to have Linda Ashman here and to highlight her book, Take Your Pet to School Day. Uh, that Eric Jones will be doing a reading for, uh, for hashtag read with Eric in August. Thank you, Linda, for your time today. Thank you so much, Melissa, for all you're doing. And thank you, Eric, for reading these books. We just love what you're doing, both of you, all of you. <laughs> Thanks so much. Thank you. Bye.